Last time, we looked at Francis Bacon and his scientific method. With the Bible being printed by Gutenberg, many were able to read it. Many wanted to know more about the creator they found in its pages. They read of a reasonable, unchangeable, law-giving God who is not part of his creation and whose attributes and power can be seen in the things he created. With this worldview, it made sense to be prepared to spend years, if necessary, studying the creation in great detail, trying to discover the laws the Creator had established. It was reasonable to expect that such laws would exist and would be permanent and unchanging. Tycho Brahe spent years building an observatory where he spent much of his career taking observations of sun, moon, planets and stars, observations which are ten times more accurate than anyone had made before him. Brahe used his observations to draw up a model of the heavens which has never been refuted. Brahe died before he could thoroughly analyse all his observations, but his assistant, Johannes Kepler, was prepared to spend years of laborious calculation with only pen and paper to help him to discover the elliptical paths of the planets around the sun. He was confident that there would be an ordered structure that could be found if he put in sufficient determination. Kettler made the famous statement that the privilege of a scientist is to think God's thoughts after him. Perhaps the greatest scientist of all time was Isaac Newton. He set new standards for accuracy for experimentation. Perhaps this is one of the reasons he was able to achieve so much scientific innovation. French scientists were unable to reproduce his results in optics. He invited them to his laboratory, and they were astounded to find he constructed his apparatus to a hundredth of an inch. When they made apparatus to this accuracy, they could reproduce his results. Newton made the famous declaration this most beautiful system of the sun, planets and comets could only proceed from the counsel and dominion of an intelligent and powerful being. Newton spent more time researching the Bible than researching science. A biographer said of him, were it not for Newton's God, he would never have gone looking for his laws. Gottfried Leibniz, an intellectual giant of his age, said, It is especially in sciences that we see the wonders of God, his power, wisdom and goodness. That is why, since my youth, I have given myself to the sciences that I loved. Leonard Euler developed Newton's mechanics to new heights. He developed partial differential equations. He developed fluid mechanics, which includes aerodynamics and hydrodynamics. For 50 years, more than a third of all research papers published on mathematics, theoretical physics and engineering mechanics were written by Euler. Euler attended Bible study every day of his life. When he was in the cradle, his father took the Bible studies. When he grew up, he took the Bible studies. When his children grew up, they brought their families to his Bible studies. When he was old, he went blind, but he still led the Bible studies because he knew the Bible off by heart. Euler noted that even the most respected scientists are liable to humiliating weaknesses and inconsistencies. He pointed out that a revelation was absolutely necessary to us and we ought to avail ourselves of it with the most profound veneration. He then made the point that when unbelievers pour scorn on the Bible, when it presents us with things which may appear inconceivable, we have but to reflect on the imperfections of human understanding, which is so apt to be misled. We'll see in later episodes just how badly the understanding of many scientists of our own time have been misled. But strictly following the scientific method shows up mistakes and forces a change in the right direction, leading gradually to a consistent understanding of how nature really works, 
This often leads to useful inventions. Newton's discoveries made it possible to calculate forces and stresses, to accurately predict the behaviour of bridges, comets and cannonballs, to make better lenses and telescopes and many other things. Volta, Ampere and Faraday opened up the understanding of electricity. Others like Dalton led to an understanding of chemistry. These findings led to enormous advances in industry. An atheist worldview is based on accident and chance, with order somehow emerging out of chaos all by itself. It would not expect nature to be ruled by fixed and unchanging laws. But so many atheists saw that science worked and got involved that eventually they took over and trampled underfoot Bacon's scientific method together with Euler's good advice. Let's look at that next time. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe and press the bell so that you'll be notified as I release new movies. If you'd like to support this project, you're welcome to do so through Patreon. Find a link on my channel banner and in the description below.